Hi everyone, I'm here now at Bitcoin Oasis with Luke Dasher. He is a CTO and I believe you are chairman of Ocean Mining, right? Uh, Correct. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, look, I think the, the question on a lot of people's minds will be how you're thinking about the, the spam question. So, uh, maybe you want to just define for people, you know, because some people have this mindset of, well, many people have the mindset that, okay, Bitcoin is permissionless and it's kind of difficult to non-arbitrarily define spam. Uh, but I believe you have a different view. How would you define spam on the chain? Using Bitcoin, I would agree, is permissionless, but attacking Bitcoin is quite different. Spam is generally and broadly defined as anything that people have not consented to participate in or not, don't want to participate in, but they're being forced to against their will. And so everybody who's adopted Bitcoin has agreed to this monetary use case and financial transactions, even to an extent smart contracts, but nobody has, well, I'm not, not nobody, but everybody has not all agreed to storing other data processing altcoin stuff that's not even part of Bitcoin, like the ordinals and inscriptions. And so the fact that there is not this unanimous support for these things means that they are spam. I see. And so I guess in a sense it's like a almost like a opt-in social contract kind of argument you're making here that basically if you're using Bitcoin you've agreed to the monetary uses and you, arguably even if it's a monetary use that you disagree with, right, if it's like terrorism or things like that, you would say technically everyone's opted in for that but not right. for the, the spam of the inscriptions, etc. Right. I see. And it, it's possible to put these things on a new blockchain that is even tied into Bitcoin and people can opt into that. So, But the only reason to be putting it on Bitcoin's main blockchain is if the intention is to attack Bitcoin and force this on people who do not consent. I see. And so I think the other question a lot of people will have is the viability of actually filtering it out. Because, you know, a lot of people, as, as I'm sure you've seen, that people share that meme, the information theory, etc., or that uh, if you try to stop them in one way, that they the spammers will basically find another way to get their spam included, you know, as arbitrary file inclusion into the, you know, taproot, uh, uh, the witness component, or in the case of stamps or BRC20, it's just into the UTXO set. So could you just comment a little bit on how you believe it's viable to even, you know, stop the spam? Um, first, you have to understand that ultimately it is possible to do a soft fork that completely maybe not completely eliminates it, but makes it much more expensive to the point where ordinary transactions can compete. But you don't even have to get that far. There's several stages before that with the spam filtration, which can all individually be effective and have been effective for the last decade plus, which Bitcoin has been using them. They just need a, there, there just happens to be a bug that was introduced at the same time as, but not by taproot, that these inscriptions are using to bypass the existing filters. So I guess I partially agree and partially disagree, and I'm curious to hear where you disagree. So I agree that it's spam. I personally just don't view it as being possible to really meaningfully filter it out. And here's how I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it like even if you were to adapt some of these things like stop bare multi-sig equals zero or the data carrier size issue in Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin Core only has releases on average every six months, right? And so that means you're kind of relying on the network updating to that, but then the spammers can just basically rely on the fact that not everybody's updated and also use this kind of API method of, you know, out of band inclusion uh, by basically going to the miners and paying them to include their spam in the blocks. So I'm curious what you see there and why you still think it's feasible even if, okay, I guess, let me put, let me put the question this way. How many nodes do you think would need to update to using, let's say, knots or some kind of filtering version at the mempool layer before filtering could be realistically you know, stopped or at least massively lowered? It's to a large extent on the miners to do the spam filtering. Once the nodes upgrade, it gradually will make it harder and harder to get the transactions to the miners. And when you say that miners can just bypass the nodes, that's technically true. But at that point, we're dealing with hostile miners and what percent of the network are these hostile miners. And then it's a completely different problem from just spam. It's an existential threat. So in one reading of Bitcoin, it could be also seen that it's like 
It's take, it takes two to tango, right? The spammers are there providing a monetary incentive, but a lot of the miners are maybe not as aligned with, let's say, you and I on the monetary view of Bitcoin, and they see it as more like just, hey, we're just a bunch of profit maximalists here, and we'll just take whatever people give us. And my, I guess the way I'm seeing it is, is it's more going to become like a stalemate where, let's say, those of us who believe in the monetary use of Bitcoin are not going to be able to enforce what we want onto the miners and they're just going to say, screw you, I'm going to take spammer money, whether it's on-chain in the fee or whether it's out-of-band paid in a different way. Again, that gets back to miners that are essentially malicious. And also, by filtering the spam and resisting this attack, it not only does it potentially impact what the miners have available to them and how the miners behave, but also it makes it harder for spammers to pass this off as something legitimate being built on Bitcoin, which it really isn't. And so it also impacts their ability to get funding for these attacks. I see, yeah. And so I guess that's maybe a, an aspect of criticism at the social layer. And I probably, I probably agree with you on the social layer aspect of it. I just, maybe I'm a bit more bearish on actually being able to stop them. Uh, but uh, it... I'm curious as well. So let's hypothetically say, you know, some of these changes were made. We did node mempool level filtering, but not consensus level filtering. Uh, what's, uh, you know, or even, or even if we, even if I gave you that, let's say we even went to the level of trying to soft fork a filter that stops, let's say, inscriptions and some of these ordinal people. What's to stop them finding another way to package things into a transaction in a way that you know is not so easy to filter or stop like let's say let's say we do one round of filtering they they do another round of response what what then well let's stop before the consensus level with spam filters the benefit of doing it with policy is that we can just continually update and we can hypothetically update faster than them if it really comes down to it but even in the context where Bitcoin Core does, let's say, six monthly releases, I mean, the spammers could just, okay, they could see, okay, Bitcoin Core has this new spam filter coming out in the next release. Oh, let's just change our, our meta protocol. Sure. It's possible to have a, maybe not the main Bitcoin Core releases, but just spam filter updates regularly. It, do, it wouldn't take a whole release to do that. But do you see the network at the whole updating to that? Like, think about all the different node protocols out there, all the node, uh, you know, whether it's Umbral and Raspberry Blitz and all the different ones out there, as well as just everyday users out there. You think they're all going to update their filter protocol to sort of go along with, with, the, with the filtering plan? Well, that's the beauty of it being a policy. It doesn't require everyone to update. The more people update, the more effective it becomes. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, how many people do you think, like if you had to estimate how many nodes need to update to do this kind of filtering, what percentage of them do you think we need to get to do this spamming, spam filtering? It's not even a threshold. The more nodes that update, the better. Okay. All right. Well, okay. So I guess, you know, let's, let's leave that there. But let's talk a little bit more generally about Ocean, what you guys are doing. Uh, any, any, any updates there on uh, Stratum V2? No significant updates yet. Okay. Um, yeah. We don't want to prematurely say we're going to have it in two weeks and then yeah. something comes up and it's not yeah. ready in two weeks, yeah. you know. Yeah, fair enough. And so on uh, any other question or any other point you want to share around... Um, this is actually this is an interesting point for discussion. I've seen some people say that, uh, and I believe it might have been Mechanic actually, but uh, uh, some people were saying that the amount you get based on the amount of hash rate you're contributing with other pools is not as much as what you're getting if you're mining with Ocean. Can you explain why that might be? The FPPS payout system is based on the average of rewards and fees in all the miners' blocks, which is tends to be tr lower than a pool that's like Ocean and doesn't have huge fees. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so... Uh, I guess it just comes down to, so basically you're saying it comes down to the way the mining um, payout structure is done, that actually there are some miners who are finding that they're getting more using Ocean even with, even with let's say, filtering out spam transactions. Right. The spam transactions really make a very small difference, maybe 0.2%, and just not having a fee counters that, but the way, because of the FPPS overheads, it's just been shocking how much difference miners are telling us they're making so much more on Ocean. 
Yeah, interesting. And I'm also curious as well, when it comes to spam, uh, I guess I've seen different arguments on why it's bad. So some people say, well, it's adding to the growth in the UTXO set and that, uh, you know, the, especially BRC20 and stamps have really contributed to the growth in the UTXO set, um, but not as much, let's say, the vanilla ordinals and inscriptions. Uh, but uh, others say maybe the impact is more that it's uh, that it's prematurely pricing out monetary users, right? Because because the BRC20 people are so high time preference, they spend so much to get into the next block because they want to do the mint, that it prices out self-custodial users. From your perspective, what do you see as like the really, what are the big objections you have against the spam in terms of what it means for monetary, you know, Bitcoin adoption? Um, yeah, I guess there's several things. The biggest one with blockchain growth in general has always been that it, it makes it harder for people to run nodes and things like stamps that pollute the UTXO set in addition are especially bad in that regard. Yeah. But I would say the node aspect, it doesn't seem to have bloated the you know, the blockchain growth that much, but it has seemed to have bloated the UTXO set a lot, uh, at least in terms of, you know, last I checked, the chain size is about 620 gigabytes, uh, and, you know, hard drive space is not that expensive nowadays, but it seems to me the UTXO set growth is maybe a little bit more of a issue. Uh, but I know you're, you're also a, you know, a known small block guy as well. Um, do you want to respond to any of that? The Hard drive space has never been the concern for blockchain size. It's really just the, the processing time to do it an initial sync for a new node. And that the blockchain currently is growing much faster than the technology has been improving to keep up with it. Yeah, I see. Uh, and so uh, when it comes to uh, Ocean, are you... See, because you're offering, uh, as I believe, there's three main templates you're currently offering for people. Uh, do you want to comment a little bit on how, what the adoption has been like with those three templates? Like, what, what, what are you seeing there? Almost everyone is sticking to the Ocean Recommended template, the default. Okay. Uh, great. Okay. So, uh, any other things you want to mention about Ocean and Bitcoin mining just while we're here? Um, our hash rate's growing. Hopefully, it'll be enough for a block a day soon. Great. Well, uh, okay. Well, uh, we'll leave it there. Uh, we'll just leave it. Where, where can listeners uh, or anyone watching find you guys out if they want to find more info? Um, we, we're on Twitter as Ocean underscore Mining, and the website for the pool is Ocean.xyz. Fantastic. Thanks, Luke.